Welcome back to Fog Wrestling here with a WCW pay-per-view review. People always talk about, well, WCW in its dying days was pish and AEW and all these p companies today is better than it. So we're going to be the judge of that. We chose this one at random. And what do you do, Hanky, at first thoughts? WCW sold out too fast. Absolute shite. Um, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> uh, wasn't the greatest show I've ever seen. That wasn't it. Wasn't the it wasn't the worst. Well, it wasn't the worst, but well, it was worse than December. Did this man? I mean, right? by by this stage, I mean the roster just seems that maybe there's a lot of people out by this stage in WCW, but it just seems like a well, very well, weak. It, it reminded me more of <laughs> era, This was like more like 2002, fucking TNA, in my opinion, than a, uh, than a WCW. We were missing Brett Goldberg, Hall, Rick, uh, Rick, uh, Scott Hogan. Steiner, yeah. Um, some other guy I forgot to mention. Sting. Yeah, Sting. He was on the poster, but wasn't... Um, just a fucking mess. Pretty oh. much missing everybody. Uh, no, I mean, yeah, pretty much everyone, I think. Yeah, and uh, they combined this. They moved Ben Ward to the main event and took him at the Triple Threat Theatre match, which they replaced with Billy Kidman. Because Jeff Jarrett was injured. And that is where we kick off, guys. Billy Kidman defeating Dean Malenko inside two and a half minutes because Dean Malenko forgot the rules and rolled outside of the ring and got beat. Awful. Catch as you can, can match. I mean, what yeah. the fuck is that? I don't know what that is, but you know Lode to leave the ring and Malenko left the ring, so Kidman picks up his first win of the night and he moves on to his second match. Any thoughts on that? It's Dean Malenko at the Manny a Thousand Holds? Well, I think that was, that was Dean Malenko's last match in the company, rolling out of the ring. <laughs> And now he's away to, he rolled all the way to the WWF, brother. Um, uh, then we had Fan Piro defeating David Flair and Crowbar in a handicap match. And the thing about this, they were building this as a three-way dance, but then it became a handicap match. Yeah. Um, well, no, I think officially it was a three-way dance, so I don't, I don't, I, I mean, who cares? Who, yeah. Daphne at ringside, uh, she's dead. Who else is dead in this match? Fan Piro's dead, isn't he? Is he? Is he? Maybe. I think he is. Aye, uh, the backstage interview as well. Mean Gene's deed, so R.I.P. Mean Gene. The show will be deed as well soon, so... Yeah, to... we're a commentary team, guys, if anyone gives a fuck. Bobby Heenan, Shivani, and everyone's depressed uncle, Mike Tanay. This guy's... I think the, I think the WCW commentary team was fucking terrible. Yep. I will always stand by that. And, um, I think David Fleur's awful. And... He wrestles in crew cut blue jeans and a, a WCW t-shirt. I mean, this match went 10 minutes. Do you know this was the... This was like the, the third longest match on the card. What fucking need was this ever to be that? Yeah, just... Never. And then in our next match, we have Big Feet. I feel like there was no structure to these WCW shows. Like, all the match cards were randomly placed and... You know, you could have a match that's supposed to be important go, like, fucking four minutes. And then you could have a jobber match that has no relevance go, like, 15 minutes. It was, it was like... So, does Fence for still believe that his WCW at this stage is better than WWF? It probably does, eh? Alright, up next we had... Big, Big Fito. Fito and Johnny Bull. I think they were referring to them as the Mama Looks at this stage. Aye, with Disco Inferno in their corner taking yeah. on the Harris... Uh, they were called the Brothers, were they? The boys, the, the Harris, Harris boys, boys. <laughs> Ron and Don, <laughs> two fucking old, fucking big guys come out. To the boys, and they call the boys. It's like you know you can get away with the Hardy boys, but not really the Harris boys when they're like in their forties. Like it just didn't make much sense. Uh, no, Big Fito and Johnny the Bull with Disco Inferno one. This was awful. Another match that was crap. Yeah, another match that was shit. And we uh, we move on uh, to another match that was crap for the Cruiserweight Championship. Oklahoma. Good old JR. <laughs> defeats Medusa with Spice. <laughs> I always thought Medusa was shit, like, to be fair. It's a win for Oklahoma, but after the end of the match, he gets barbecue sauce poured down his uh, singlet, so... Yeah, whatever. Just, just pretty shit. Yep. Ne uh, next up, though, for for the for the hard way. Hardcore championship. For the hard way. Yeah, awful. Um, we wait, had... is that is it? Can that call it a fatal four way? No, I don't know. They're just it's WCW. So wait, it's a fatal four way WWF. I think so. So they had to call it a for the hard way. 
Yeah. Oh my fucking god. I think also because it's a hardcore match. You know, they're calling it the hard way. For the... Uh, it's absolutely... Right, well, we had Brian Nobbs defeating Fit Finlay, Norman Smiley and Meng. And this match didn't make me smiley, it was pish. A big table spot, didn't even catch it on the camera. One minute the table's sitting and the next time you see it it's already been You know smashed. how this match was bad? It was six minutes and it felt like 60 minutes. Ah, uh, yeah. It um, was fucking awful. It ends with Brian Nobbs hitting Norman Smiley with a police riot shield thingy. Picks up the win. Both Nobbs and Finlay were dressed like the Dudleys. Why? I do not know. <laughs> we'll never um, know. Um, yeah. yeah. Next up, we have a bunkhouse brawl match between Kidman and Saturn. And I, I with the title I... bunkhouse brawl, you'd assume there was some sort of backstage brawl. No, it was just a match. It was just a normal match. It and wasn't Kidman... like a street fight or a brawl. Well, there was, was a just... back body drop in this match where the commentators didn't speak for a good 25 seconds. Yeah, big back body drop off the top rope and they fucking no-sold it. Like... As if nothing had happened. Yeah. But Billy Kidman, he beats him with like a, what was it, a flapjack? Something like that. Right, something like that. Next up, though, we had Stevie Ray making an appearance in Houston. He was in the hood. He was, he was like, it. hey, Booker, here's all your uh, fr- your real friends. And it was a bunch of black <laughs> bums in the streets that didn't have a fucking... He's like, this uh, may not mean a lot to you, but this means a lot to me. You don't have a fucking dollar to rub together. It was a bunch of tents and cardboard boxes stacked up neatly. With, with fuck the police written somewhere. Um, no wonder, no wonder Booker T fucking left the hood behind, like, if that's what the hood is. Jesus fucking Christ. Oh no, no wonder. Booker T cuts promo before the match saying, you used to call me Junior, well, you don't call me Junior anymore. Call me Booker T, sucker! <laughs> Can you dig that? Um, he comes out with Midnight, and then Stevie Ray comes out with the same theme song, just like a fucking jobber. We have a pretty pish match, and then it comes some bigger black guy by the name of... Big I don't know what he's called in here, but Big we, Ahmed Johnson in WWE. Yeah, they batter Booker T, and then they're like, we're the new Harlem Heat, brother. Big T, Stevie Ray, S-I-H-I-T, shit. And, uh, Speaking of shit, up next with Tank Abbott. In a shoot match. Against Jerry Flynn. Um, it, Tank Abbott went to deck Jerry Flynn. Is this Bart Gunn? I think it might be. Might not be, though. He misses, he then connects again, knocks out Jerry Flynn. Mike Tanay proceeds to say there's going to be a 10 count the ref counts the 2 decides fuck it we're not doing the a 10 count the match is over <laughs> we do need a free count but we'll, have a, we'll have a 10 count in the next match because next match is last man standing Buff Bagwell versus Diamond Dallas Page I think Buff Bagwell's trying to sleep with Diamond Dallas as Page's wife um, that's what I kind of got from the, the, the promo. story pro, promo package the match was just a cl- it just didn't it wasn't good no, it was a fucking sloppy no, no match. No WCW match is good, though. Everything just seems... I don't know, everything seems shit. It's a last one stand, the match. They use all the weapons at the start of the match, and then they're just trying to put each other down for a 10 count with standard moves by the end. And then, it's as if Kimberly misses her fucking cue. Because she comes out... When the match is over? Yeah, on, like, a count of nine. And then it's like, oh, she's distracted Bagwell, but it's like, but Bagwell won. Yeah. And Paige looked very pissed off. And then they attack back Bagwell. And then Paige fell at the ring. Yeah, and then Bagwell starts celebrating. And it's like, but you just got battered, mate. <laughs> Fucking awful. Ah, like. uh, yeah, I mean. Apparently this pay-per-view was better than the last six months of 99. I'd hate to see the last six months. I have to fucking watch it. Right, um, um, up next, we have Billy, uh, Kidman Billy Kidman's at, last match. In a caged heat match. Hell in a cell. Out comes Shane Douglas, says he's got a, a big opponent in store for Billy Kidman. We're thinking, oh, fuck, could this be Goldberg? Could this be a who? No, it's some guy called The Wall. The Wall. The Wall. <laughs> and, uh, Wish Donald Trump would build a wall so we didn't have to see this shite. Um, yeah. This is crap. Yeah, this was crap. The Wall went... I mean, ma- imagine building a hell in a cell for a five-minute match just so <laughs> The Wall can beat Billy Kidman. <laughs> The, the, the cage never even got brought into fucking play apart from, like, at the very start before they got in the ring. I know. And then once they got in the ring, it was a choke slam and that Billy was it. Kidman goes to the top rope going to hit the shoot but even though he, he clearly knows that the wall's not no longer on the ground so he still goes to the top rope in, a, in an attempt at the shoot and star press just jumps into the wall wall catches him choke slam and that is it good night that's it over like what was the whole point of this triple theater shit what, what if billy Kel- kidman had won this match what would have happened i don't know because it was supposed to be for bam Wall and jarrett it didn't matter what it's- yeah, it was supposed to be Benoit and Jarrett, but obviously because Benoit got moved to the main event and Jarrett got injured, they just stuck Kidman in it. But why? I don't know why. And what's Shane Douglas doing? Why no, can Shane but Douglas I mean, wrestle? if Billy Kidman had won the third match, did he get anything? I don't think so. 
Yeah, I don't know what the fuck the point was. I thought it was maybe a gauntlet. Oh, if you can win these three matches, you get Hulk Hogan's spot or something. <laughs> but anyway, next stop, there was a match with stuff on the line. If Funk won, the NW disbanded. If Nash won, he became the Kamesh. Yeah. I, mean, I think you already knew who was going to win yeah, this. Yeah, we had a street fight. Stipulations or no stipulations. <laughs> uh, Funk gets powerbombed, jackknifed through the table. Best thing that happened here is uh, Hegan's mic went off. So. No, the best thing that happened here, Nash clotheslines Funk. Funk is stuck on the rope. Nash stirs at him and then he just falls on his neck. It was great. And then Mike tonight was like, I'm back. <laughs> and Funk was like, I'm gone. <laughs> um, Nash said to Funk, if you can crawl into the ring, I'll let you keep your commissioner job. Took Funk about 10 minutes to crawl into the ring, <laughs> yeah. even though the match only lasted eight. And, uh, and then he's like, I'm a lying bastard. <laughs> Jackknife for a couple of chores. One, two, like three. Night. Yeah. Terry Funk's gone. Nash is the new commissioner. Probably my favourite match of the night. Yeah, and that's not saying much. Uh, next up, we have a promo from Arn Anderson. He says, oh no, Kevin Nash is in charge, or should I say Kevin McMahon? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, Kevin, why'd they call him Kevin McMahon? Then, he, then, then, like, he didn't go with it very well. He, he kind of paused and looked at the camera and went, oh, shit, I said McMahon. <laughs> He's like, let me just compose myself. He actually said this. It was a fucking mess. Uh, absolute bullshit. Then, don't, don't worry, you'll be sitting beside Flair in about 18 months. Uh, yeah. Out comes Michael Buffer. He says, fucking, uh, da, 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 main event time with Ben Wall, the Crippler, taking on Sid Vicious. Out come the entire locker room. Well, say then a bunch of jobbers. Yep, yeah, absolute fuck. It was just this card without Harlem Heat and Nash and Funk, so I'm Page and Bagwood. So it was just fucking. It was it was literally everyone who was not mid card or up. So yeah, Pesh. I mean, it was an all right match, and then Ben Wall, he gets fucking choke slammed by said he puts his foot underneath the rope. Arn Anderson spots us straight away. Then he locks a cross face in. Sid sticks his foot underneath the rope. Doesn't give a fuck. Taps. Good night. I think it was a bit of a screw job. Ben Wall wins. He holds up the belt. The commentators don't give a fuck. And then we kind of just go off the air. Um, well, before we go off the air, Ben Wall goes backstage. You, I think you actually passed out at this stage. Nash says, you've only got an R40 of that title ring, then I'm coming for you. And then he calls him a turd. And then Ben Wall goes, well, this wee turd. It's going to beat you, you big turd. And that's how it goes off the air. Who's it Ben McCall, big turd? Nash. Wow. He's like, this wee turd's going to beat you, you big turd. And then obviously, Ben was never seen again in WCW. Because he, he fake hates it. And on that note, what are you rating this turd of your paper for you? I'll give it a one. A one? What is this fucking 2022 or something? Oh, it was fucking awful. I can't. I like the hood stuff, even though it was kind of ripping the picture of Stevie Ray. The street fight was good, but Billy Kidman in three matches is something that should never happen. Oklahoma was awful. No, but every match was awful apart from. What the... street fight? Kevin Nash and Hot and that no, right. street fight. I'll get a three out of ten. I'll get it. Like, average is out of 1.5, but a three? If you're giving it a one, I give it a three. It this is two. a fucking paper for you. If you're giving it a one, I give it a three. It's averaging it to me. Is it? Uh, that is, isn't it? Aye, uh, well, it's still better than AEW, like, but not much. Right. And on that note, guys, that is it. Two well, at the end. Will we be back? No. Did we review another WCW? No. Probably not. So till then, peace.